so here we have uh, two subsystems a and b interacting with each other exchanging power and the information of effort goes from a to b and because it's a physical interaction uh, it has to follow the laws of physics so uh, a cannot also determine the flow it has to accept whatever flow is decided by the subsystem b and we uh, represent the receiving of the information of effort by the subsystem b by placing a stroke here on this uh, power bond uh, towards the end uh, which is shown over here <coughs> likewise uh, when you have the effort receiving end uh, that is uh, when a becomes the effort receiving end so you see uh, in case uh, the information of effort is being decided by the subsystem b then the information of flow has to be decided by the subsystem a in that case the end which receives the uh, information of effort is a here so the stroke causal stroke is placed towards the end a <clears throat> now uh, we did proceed in our last lecture we worked about uh, we discussed about the variables uh, effort and flows uh, about power how they can be written as a product of these two variables uh, how effort uh, when you integrate effort with respect to time you get the variable of momentum generalized momentum because it could mean different things in different energy domains and likewise when you integrate flow the other variable of power you get displacement q represented by q generalized displacement we say generalized displacement because it could mean different uh, uh, it could have different implications in different energy domains so it's called generalized displacement then we also saw how power uh, could be written in terms of rate of change of energy and how this energy it could be represented in two different ways if you write uh, if you express effort in terms of rate of change of momentum then uh, and integrate it you get change in kinetic energy and if you uh, represent uh, flow uh, in this expression if you uh, represent flow as rate of change of generalized displacement with respect to time you get change in potential energy so the nature of these two energies is different naturally uh, the issue arises how we represent uh, effort when do we represent using effort when do we represent using flow so uh, this question will become clear to you as we discuss the elements i and c uh, so we proceed to the next one here we have a simple mechanical system okay and in this system we have uh, drawn the bond graph model for this system and you can see that uh, this bond graph model is the model for this system it it shows how the power uh, is transacted between the elements of the system just to make things a little more simpler i'll explain the details we have a we have a mass m over here and uh, on one end it is connected to a spring and damper combination to a fixed end to the fixed ground and on the other side this mass is being uh, there is a force f of t being applied on this mass the mass can move with the velocity v uh, which is the time derivative of x dot uh, time derivative of the displacement x we can also write it as x dot 
so uh, when you uh, would like to model this system you can write it as uh, you can start with a junction we draw a junction one over here and uh, we assign the inertia of this mass using this i element i stands for inertia okay and we say that this mass has the velocity v so this one junction which represents this velocity it's connected directly to this i element then we have the velocity across the ends of this spring and damper combination the spring as well as the damper both have the same velocity across them so we assign uh, we connect a bond from this one junction to the c as well as to the r because both of them uh, have the same velocity across their ends here uh, we are considering a linear spring so uh, the effort that is the force that is produced by the spring is just uh, k into q which is the deformation of the spring k into q k is the stiffness and q is the deformation of the spring and the force that is being uh, applied uh, the opposing force that is applied by the damper is uh, r multiplied by the relative velocity across its ends so that is r into v so here you can see that we have this uh, system where we have connected the i element c element r element and you can see that the force that we are applying on this mass it's also moving with the same velocity v so all these elements are connected to the same junction one which represents the same velocity or the same flow variable okay the efforts are different so for a one junction it is a common flow junction or it's a uh, junction where you can have different efforts uh, these efforts get algebraically summed up and we'll see uh, about um, when we discuss about junctions uh, in bond graph we can have we can identify the states associated with the system so in general uh, it is only the i and the c elements which contribute states to the system okay you want to uh, understand the response of the system you can response uh, you can understand its response if you know how how the system behaves you can you can know that by its states by plotting uh, against time the value of the states against those points of time so uh, these states uh, it's only i and c elements which contribute states to the system will understand why they contribute states to the system not the others okay uh, we call them as storage elements because they store information about uh, the system about the past history of the system and that's why they are also permitted to uh, contribute states to the system uh, in general the uh the i element uh, it provides uh, the in the state of momentum and the c element it provides the state of generalized displacement uh here we have a simple electrical system uh, in which we have just like the mechanical system but here we have a, velo a, a voltage source and that is connected uh, to an inductance and a resistance and a capacitance 
like this in series. And uh, we can model this. We can look at the flow element. That is the current that is passing through this. It is the same current, current I. So we assign, because it's a common flow, we assign a one junction uh, representing a common flow. Uh, and uh, the same current passes through the I element. So you connect a one junction. Uh, you connect uh, the element I to this one junction. Uh, the same passes through the R element. So you connect a bond directly to the R. And here also uh, the same current passes through the C element. So from this one junction you connect a bond to the C element. And the same current is being supplied by this source. So you connect this source directly to this one junction. So that's how you are able to uh, construct the bond graph for this. The other details I'm not explaining to you right now. We'll discuss that later. But you can see over here that for every bond you have expressed, you have shown two variables of power. You have shown effort and flow. Okay, and it means the entire transaction of power between the subsystems uh, of the whole system, they are represented uh, in this uh, graphical representation of dynamics of the system. And even though you uh, are now dealing with an electrical system, just like as you discussed in the previous uh, system here where you had a mechanical system. You are making use of the same elements. OK, and you are getting a similar bond graph. Uh, showing the equivalence of these two systems. Uh, it means that. Using the same set of tools you can model in multi energy domains. OK, that is the power of bond graph that uh, you can model not only model in multi energy domains, but then you can also determine the equivalence of one system in one domain uh, in terms of a system in another energy domain. Uh, here we have. Another simple system. I will uh, discuss this uh, a little later with you. 